Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Relatable. I am your host, Stephanie Michelle. We are covering a topic today that everybody can relate to. There's no question that everybody out there has had to deal with a difficult person at some point in their life, and maybe you're dealing with them now. You might be at work, and you're like, yeah, nudge, nudge, that's my neighbor. So we're going to cover that. Uh, in its entirety in a couple minutes. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, I have two questions for you. First question is like, what's the most annoying thing someone can do? And particularly noise. What's the most annoying noise that a person could do that would just drive you nuts? I had an experience yesterday, and if someone says this noise, I'll share that experience. So like really like extend yourself like, oh yeah, I had this moment where this was really noisy and it bothered me. Tell me that in Facebook comments. And then the other question I have is like, please share what you find is uh, a characteristic of a difficult person. So like, what does a difficult person have in common every time for you? What's that thing that gets to you? Of course, for everyone, there's going to be different things that like annoy us differently or get to us differently. Uh, I tend to believe that if we followed, for instance, the five agreements by Don, what are you doing over there? <laughs> We, we, you guys, we were cracking up so hard before we started the show. I'm, I'm in that zone, and I'm sure there's going to be some weird chuckles in the show. But yeah, this guy is, is off the charts of energy. And, and I don't know if you could see, but Deeds, my dog's in, in, uh, in the studio today, too. So he might pop up. He just heard his name. He's definitely going to be a pop up. Anyhow, difficult people. So there's things that I think that if everybody followed these things, they would be less difficult or might have like a, a moment where they seem a little bit difficult, but these are really good things to live by. And this is uh, The Five Agreements by Don McGill, Ru Ru Don McGill Ru Ruiz, I think is how you pronounce it. So he see, here he is. Hello, hello buddy. Um, so, <laughs> so the first one is be impeccable with your words. So just have integrity with your word. That would make you a less difficult person if you feel like you might be difficult. Just having this one thing, you know, watching your words and honoring your commitments would definitely take you off that list. Uh, the second thing is don't take things too personal. You know, sometimes we like get really upset and really angry and jump to conclusions and, and then people are like, why is this person so mad and you're perceived as being difficult? But if we stop, take a couple breaths, don't take things too personal, that would be very helpful. Uh, don't make assumptions. That's a good one. You know that saying? You know that saying? Yeah. <laughs> What's the Assuming saying? Assuming is... Uh Making an ass out of you and me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So don't make assumptions. Always do your best. You know, just try to, to try to do your best every day. And the fifth one is listen, listen, but be skeptical. You know, so listen, but like ask questions. Or my favorite thing, be curious, <laughs> like my dog is right now. And the last one that I would add to that, this is my own, is know that you share the world and the now with others. Like if you walked around understanding that you're in the world with other people and you're sharing an experience and sharing the now, you wouldn't be a difficult person because you'd be taking in everything and you'd be like, okay, maybe I need to watch my noise level or open the door for somebody or whatnot. So those are just things to consider as we go into our topic. If you are a fan of the show and you've watched before, you know who's sitting next to me because he's been here a couple times. This is my, my uh, co-hostess with the mostess, Robert Graves. <laughs> um, if you don't remember, he, this is his bio. He left behind his 10-year Marine Corps career and vowed to continue to help his brothers and sisters in arms in order for those to serve, who had served to become more successful outside the military. He is the author of How to Grow a Beard, a military transition guide back into civilian life, as well as the host of the podcast, Year of the Vet. I can always count on my friend Robert to show up in conversational fashion. We both have our T's on. I'll talk about mine later. Um, Robert is also a mental peak performance coach. He's a certified hypnosis, hypnotherapist, and who focuses on athletic peak performance training and military transition assistance. Can I tell you something? Uh, yeah, that's what we're here to do, talk. <laughs> so, like, I graduate with my master's in May, right, mm -hmm. in sports psychology, and so I'm, I'm molding both worlds of sports psychology and peak performance uh, mentality into the military because I just got an internship to um, West Point. 
So I'll be at West Point for the summer. Congratulations. Yeah. Good job, my friend. Thank you. Good on you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I forgot to say, you may notice that there's another guest on the set with us, old, old Buzz Lightyear here, and you're going to have to watch the entire <laughs> show to understand why Buzz is sitting between us. So you can guess if you're watching on Facebook right now. You can take some guesses yeah. and we'll let you know if you're right or not at the end. But remember, Share with us what makes a difficult person and a noise that would just drive you nuts if you had to listen to it all day. Because I had an experience <laughs> yesterday that I might share if someone guesses. But you got to guess to get that, get that out of me, to hear what annoyed me yesterday. Anyhow, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. How do you like the new studio? I love it. I love the updates. It's, uh, it's coming a long way from, because uh, on Instagram, you've got this post of an empty studio yeah. with just wine. You with do have an Instagram. I do, yeah, really. <laughs> I He's, remember that picture. Robert was, like, Robert was like really dogging me out earlier, like, uh, I can't find your Instagram. I'm like, dude, I tagged you I in remember, a post yeah, yesterday. I remember that picture, yeah. It yeah. was an empty studio, and then B, I came. B, I came who was behind the camera and I, in our shadows, yeah. in the empty space. See? Yeah. <sighs> See? It's funny how your mind works, isn't it? I know. It? You uh -huh. know, so much going on. Yeah, totally. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, it, it, it's it's... And then you've got the pictures and your desk. You were going to put the, the golden monkeys up here. And I saw in the last week. Did you that see you where they are? Yeah, I saw. You know where they so, are? Yeah, they're in the, in the cubbies. I'll have to take a picture of this for you guys to see. But I ordered um, what I thought were going to be these tiny little see no evil monkeys, like little figurines that I would just sit on my desk, you know, no bigger than two, two or three inches. <laughs> Does that look like two or three inches? You tell them, buddy. <laughs> these is the noise police. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. He's the, see, there you go, now you can see. Now everybody can see you. Uh, so I thought that we were gonna get these tiny little monkeys and they are literally eight inches high. They're the biggest yeah. figurines I've ever seen. And they're gold. And we're talking shiny Trump gold, like obnoxious gold. So I didn't know what to do with them, but I found a really great place. Yeah. And I'll, I'll take a picture so everybody else spot. can see. Hi, sweetheart. All right, so, and Deeds is on the set because he had, he had dental surgery, he had five teeth pulled. Oh. And he's not eating very well. And I'm like, he, I, I just need him with me right yeah. now. I need to, to, need to make love. sure he's, yeah, he's cool. So he'll pop in when he wants to. And we're going to allow that, right? Good to go. Is that difficult behavior? No. 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 All right, good. It's dog behavior. My dogs have difficult behavior. Really? Oh, yeah. Like what? Like every, you know how like you give a little like leeway to certain things, to certain people, to certain animals? And yeah. Then they like shit all over your floor yeah yeah that's mine like we we <laughs> let our we let our dogs like have a little more room and a little more space in the house and then they literally shit on the carpet and like you were just outside i just outside i don't know why i want to share this with you but i'm just going to do it if you do you yeah. know about the roomba yeah you that you know yeah, that, the little do you know vacuum? that there is a series of the worst videos on YouTube. I already know where you're going with this. Right. That with sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's worth YouTubing and looking up due to oh, search. Just do no. Roomba and dogs. And that's all I'm saying. I'm just gonna leave that oh, with that. But just imagine that would be my the thing that's supposed to help clean, spread something along. Oh my god. And you come home to a house that's You just, just talked me out of buying one. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea with a yeah, dog. Yeah, I'll never buy one. Yeah, not a dog. A cat, maybe. A cat could sit on top of it and just, you know, rule the world from the room Roomba. I but hope my snort didn't just go through the I'm mic. gonna send you that video, by the way. Okay. Okay, <laughs> let's get to, let's turn to the it. topic of the day. Yeah. Uh, you, well, yeah, let's just get real. So, be, I'm going to share, you're going to share, what, let's, let's talk about the characteristics of somebody difficult. Like, what, it, what makes a person difficult in your mind? Yeah, so much. I think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, not understand, there's, there's people who don't understand the role they have at the moment, right? Like, sometimes, like, for instance, this is your show, mm -hmm. right? And I have my own show, so if I were to come and take over your show, I'm not understanding my place, right? That's right, Deeds. That's right, buddy. Right? He's You're like, know your role, no, buddy. He's like, yeah, I second that. So, and like, like, I do not know my role right now. Come on, buddy. Come on. But, come on. Um, and that goes for, like, uh, anything teamwork, right? In the Marine Corps, it was the same way. Like, you have, you have a group full of NCOs. There's only one NCO I see. 
yeah. non-commissioned officer in charge. Now you might have a bunch of the same guys that share the same rank, been in the same time, and there's always one person that's like, why is that guy in charge when I X, Y, Z? It's because you don't know your role. So people who don't understand their role at the time, those guys, ladies, people in general, like those people make things hard. They yeah. always want to overstep their bounds. They always, and like maybe their information is better or maybe like they have knowledge that they can share, but they're untactful with yeah. it, right? Yeah. And another kind of going on with that is a leader who won't take, you know, knowledge from people who are helping them. Mm -hmm. the, oh, I know what's going on. I'm in charge right now, therefore it's my way. And they're just shut off to all, all you know, uh, advice from anybody else. Yeah. Those are like the two that stand out to me the most. Yeah. <clears throat> what comes up for me when you share that, so for sure, yeah, not knowing your role in a situation is a huge pet piece of mine. Like, um, I have zero tolerance, so <laughs> zero, I'm not I'm exaggerating on this, for someone that continues to t talk bad or blame somebody yeah. for something um, or get themselves in the same situation over and over again and, and complain about it without, with no awareness to their own role in mm -hmm. the situation, which is, by the way, the common denominator in all those bad mm -hmm. situations. No tolerance for that. It's like, yeah. you know, just get real. Like, hey, it wasn't my best self in this, or, you know, yeah. this is what happened. Um, and, and it goes back to, like, I guess my second biggest pet peeve is people that don't understand that they're in the world together with yeah. other people or in the now. Um, you know, you're sharing space, you're sharing, you know, what you hear and see and like just acknowledging yeah. that, like it's not just your experience. Yeah. So there's something about, I think, that same person that we're, we're both sort of talking about um, that maybe there's a little entitlement in there that they like expect to have a better thing or, yeah. you know, or like only their experience matters in yeah. a time that doesn't work for me. Well, um, let me tell you also. Well, oh, just tell me. So <laughs> you're like, he's leaning in. It's going to be good. Like. You know, I've had to pick up extra work trying to get through um, grad school, right? Yeah. And so one of my jobs is that I, I'm security at uh, Break Room 86, which is this yeah, another place. Bar. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a karaoke bar. <laughs> yeah, I, it's fun. I tell everybody if I didn't work there, I would come there. But yeah. like the the process of me being sober at three in the morning when these people, <laughs> you know, are like out on the street pouring out, just way drunk. Yeah. I I see who I used to be when I was in my early 20s. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I wish I can go back and apologize to every drunk, to like every bouncer, every like bartender, every person I ever like was that obnoxious, not knowing my space, kind of my surroundings kind yeah. of person. You know, when I used to smoke, I'd be in line at uh, Magic Mountain. And like now I, I'm a non-smoker and I'm like, man, like, you were that guy, I was Robert. That, I can't I, even I, imagine you I as that guy. I continuously <laughs> tell myself, man, I, I used to be that guy. Yeah. I used to be that guy. I used to be that guy. And I'm so glad that I've like moved on from that. But I can't fault these people. You can only try to help them, you know, yeah. um, by you know dropping knowledge. But I used to be, I used to be the obnoxious, hard to deal with person. I, I mean, a lot of people will vouch for that. I have grown significantly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for your growth. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what do you think about uh, narcissism as a characteristic? Oh man, um, well you know it's it's classifiable in the DSM, right? So it, it is actual uh, mental um, diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, like you can, and you have to go through therapy to beat that. And so narcissism, I don't, but I don't know. But hardly anybody would because Never. The, by the definition, oh. well, the definition of narcissism. What's wrong with me? Yeah, yeah you, <laughs> you don't think there's anything yeah, wrong. Exactly. You think it's everybody else. So you would never go to therapy for yeah. it. Yeah, like, and I know, I know one in particular that comes to mind. And um, so do I. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, what's, what's, I will deal with, somebody who is extremely narcissistic in a different manner than I would deal with, you know, the grocery clerk who's giving me a bad attitude every time I walk in there. And it's, um, I've literally cut myself off from these people for months to a year until they can come around and say, oh, like, I'm sorry for 
X, Y, Z. And it's never, I'm sorry for my actions. It's like, I'm sorry that you're feeling it this way towards me. Yeah, yeah. It's like. I'm sorry you feel this way. Yeah. I, I had a couple of apologies like that. But you, you just probably know which one I'm thinking about that came uh, through an email. I'm sorry you've had that experience with me. I'm like, really? Is that an apology? Yeah. And that's all you're going to get though, yeah. right? You're not going to get anything better from that. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So, so we're calling out other people's bad behavior and what we think is bad behavior. Um, let's get real and, and, and be honest yeah. and, and, and look at ourselves yeah. and talk about what we feel or what might be the bad behavior yeah. that people have got from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to start? You, you want to start. start. Oh, Ladies see? first. Ladies first. Yeah. Well, it's the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> see how you are. <laughs> see how you are. All right. Uh, okay. So the first, the first one that thing, first words that came to mind is I suspect that people think that I'm self-absorbed uh, because I'm super focused right now mm -hmm. on um, contributing in the world. I don't have children. Um, my legacy will not be raising good human beings that are going to go do good things. Uh, so I'm really leaned into what my legacy work yeah. and like how I'm going to leave this place a better place. And I'm sure, I'm 100% sure actually, I'm just going to be real, that people have had experiences with me like, God, she's so always talking about her stuff. And yeah. I'm like, well, that's kind of where I am. And I um, really, you know, right now at, at this stage in my life, like I can, I can, I can be available for people that are my tribe. And what I consider my tribe is people that are also concerned about mm -hmm. doing a good thing or leaving things, you know, leaving this world in a better place or really just leaned into something that they're passionate about. I have, again, zero tolerance for like the blame and the, the complaining and the negativity. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, I, I don't have time for that. So I'm sure people have said, oh God, you mm -hmm. know? And, and saying all this, I'm sure an, another thing that kind of comes up that I'm sure, could be perceived as like bad behavior make, makes it difficult to deal with me is it seems I might be a little judgmental because <laughs> I'm, you know, real, I'm very self-aware. What was the face? Yeah. <laughs> a little, a little I think you're like hiding behind. <laughs> yeah. Just a like, I don't believe I am, but I, I guess I'm a little judgmental. I, I don't believe, I mean, I can be, yeah. you know, like really, um, but I choose to think it's like discernment. Like I'm going through so much stuff in yeah. a day. It's like I've got to rule things out pretty quickly yeah. to stay on track. Um, and I'm sorry, you know, and honestly, if I knew that someone, if I was on someone's difficult person list, I'd want to know. Yeah. So if you're watching, I'd want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd, I would make, make um, steps to like, to make that better. Like if I could, if I knew, if I generally have hurt someone or have said something, um, you know, I'd want to improve on that. And, yeah. and, and, and it's why I think uh, it's so important to ask somebody a why question. Like if you feel like something just went down that you were upset by, to be able to go, hey, you know, why'd you do that? Like, mm -hmm. because often why you think it happened, you know, back to the five agreements, like you took something too personal is not at all what the other person yeah. was you know, going for. Yeah. yeah. So judgmental, uh, maybe a little self-absorbed, what makes me, what, and, I, and maybe a little bit too much type A. <laughs> maybe those are the three, like, no, I'm gonna do it this way, because I know, you know, like yeah. I know it's, this is the best way. Maybe those three. I think, um, ditto. Yeah. Oh, really? No. Uh-huh, <laughs> not. No. <laughs> I'm done, so. There's, nobody thinks I'm difficult. We're done. Ditto. No, um, I'm, I'm probably gonna say that my wife thinks I'm the most difficult, uh, because I do give, give, give to so many other people, but I tolerate less in the house, yeah. right? Um, I think one of my downfalls is that I expect more from my tribe, like, and that goes from immediate, like, family to best friends to, mm -hmm. you know, the people that, because I don't use the, friend lo the term friend loosely. Mm -hmm. Like, I will say, oh, you know, uh, here's an associate of mine, or, that person's an associate or like uh, we're friendly, you know, yeah. or um, that's somebody that I'm, I'm good with, I'm cool with. But like when I say friend, then I mean that these people have significant, um, they, they have an emotional attachment to me and vice versa, right? Yeah. So when my friends um, kind of falter and, and fall or aren't doing what it takes to be successful or um, and, and they're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna do this, but they're not putting in the work, and you know, and I'll give them some like advice, 
or they come to me for advice and then it, I get like through, blown off. I get more frustrated and angry with them and they see that than I would with the layman, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not treating them like I'm treating, you know, Steve at Starbucks, you know, Starbucks Steve. Starbucks Steve. Yeah. If, I, if they're like, Hi, Starbucks yeah, Steve. Hey, Starbucks Steve. <laughs> <coughs> oh, like 700 of you somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Like if, uh, if I'm not treating them on the same realm of uh, harshness, they're like, you know, why, why are you like that with us? And you're so angry all the time. I'm like, I'm not angry. I just expect more from my people. Like I expect, I have a winning mentality, yeah, right? And I yeah. want everybody to win. And if, if you're coming to me and you want to win, and look, I'm not, a, I fail all the time, but I think we've talked about it before, fail forward, fail fast, right? Yeah. And it's like, how long do you want to be upset? How long do you want to be at the bottom? Like, it's time to let that go, move forward, and, and yeah. just push, 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 push. And so another thing that people would say is that I too, like, am too aggressive. I, I push, right? Mm -hmm. I remember one time when I got out, I got out of the Do you give camp. unsolicited advice? I try, I'm, I'm trying to stop that. Yeah. Right? I, I'm, more of a, I'm more aware of it now than I used to be. Yeah. Right? I just try not to at all. Yeah. I don't like receiving it. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'll, I might ask before I give it to someone. Yeah. Like, can I share something with you that might help? Yeah. But I try not to do it at all. I and like, it's annoying. I've started saying, like, I'll start asking that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, you don't, I, you don't have to take it. Like, yeah. I believe me. Or you don't even have to listen. Don't peas and yeah. carrots, peas and yeah. carrots. I can't hear you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like... I'm trying to be more aware of what I'm doing on, on the backside yeah. where like I'm being present in that, like, do I want the do unto others, right? Yeah. You know, love thy neighbor, that whole mindset. I, I can relate to, I definitely, um, I'm harder on the people that are in my life. Um, you know, I, I, I want them to be accountable for their own joy and happiness and love. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I know that that's a, a path to, you know, well-being and so, um, when they're not, it's like, yeah, it's like it's frustrating. And a lot of times I'll just sit back and not say anything, but you're right. Starbucks, Steve, like when someone's just rude in yeah. general, like we have encounters all day long, you know, if you're out in the world where someone, you're two steps behind them and they didn't hold the door yeah. or like, or, or the elevator or, um, are walking two steps in front of you and smoking or yeah. on the phone and stop, like, yeah. stop, you're behind yeah. them. They just stop like, hello, I'm behind yeah. you. Um, that happens all the time, but I don't. Like, I'm not gonna go on a rant on Facebook. Oh my God, can you believe this person just did this? Yeah. Because I just let it go. I mean, I, yeah. we're not in a, in a relationship and they clearly don't perceive me as being in their world, so they're not. Yeah. You know, I just kind of let it go. And I also um, found myself trying to practice this more is just having, just trying to shoot a little love, a little God shot, a little spiritual little something at them. Um, because I believe people that, are, that act that way are hurting. Yeah. You know, that they wouldn't walk around with a negative uh, outlook on life or, you know, not being kind enough to go, oh, yeah, I'll hold the elevator for you or I'll just chat you up, you know, while we're in this elevator together. They're, they're hurting. And I want to, mm. you know, just shoot a little energy at them to like, oh, I hope you don't hurt as much tomorrow, you know? Yeah. But yeah, definitely more room for them than I friends don't, family. I see when I shoot out that positivity and that love, I see more, and not see, I've experienced more of like, oh, like nobody's ever watched out for me like that. Yeah. Not necessarily, I don't feel like they, they even understand that people are good, right? Yeah. Like it's not necessarily that they're hurting, it's just that they're, they, like in general, right? They.com. Like, <laughs> you know, those people. Yeah, like th I just feel like, People in general have been so jaded to how like gross we are to each other. Yeah. That it's normal. And then when you're nice, it's like, whoa, like that's unexpected and it feels weird. Yeah. I have so much to say about this. Um, so the immediate imagery that comes into my mind when you share that is there, there was a coffee shop that I used to work out of in Venice when I lived in, in Venice. Not Starbucks. Um, not Starbucks. Okay. So sorry, Starbucks, Steve. <laughs> uh, 
And I would get my coffee and, and I could go up on like this riser kind mm -hmm. of platform and be able to have this perfect view or like this high view of like everybody that walks in. Yeah. And so I would watch, um, so when people would come in and like one person would, you know, have the cur courage enough to like smile at someone or mm -hmm. to, like do something kind of kind, you literally could watch the energy ping through the room. Mm -hmm. So the, the person did it, the person receives it, mm -hmm. that was directed, it comes back to that person, they light up, and then everybody around them, you could watch it, ping, 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 yeah. ping. As opposed to the opposite, if the person was brave enough to like say hi, or hello, mm -hmm. or smile, or try to make a joke, or whatever, and the person didn't receive it, boom, deadpan. Mm -hmm. And I think it is that like dead, energy that like we kind of just expect it like this yeah. is this is how we should you know what's to be expected when you try to relate in the yeah. world but you're right when you do the opposite it surprises people they feel it and there's something about um you know the ability to just sort of connect in the yeah. now even with strangers yeah. that is to me like the the beauty of the human condition yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. we just had a moment and it just felt good. Like yeah. it's why I mean I'm wearing the shirt. I I'm here for feel good relating, not fast food relating. Yeah. You know that that we forgot. A lot of people forgot that we are supposed to feel connected, yeah. and it's really easy to do. But we forgot doing yeah. forgot to do the things that allow us to feel that way. Well, it's funny because I just was listening to about a month ago um, a story. Well, a theory, right? About it's quantum physics yeah. attached with emotional. Yeah. like characteristics and so like you and I know well that you know energy energy yeah. you portray energy and you bring that with you right so you were talking about walking into the coffee shop mm -hmm. so like imagine <coughs> imagine that there's absolutely nothing outside that I mean we can see the window right mm -hmm. so whatever we see in this frame that's what it is mm -hmm. but we don't know what's out the door so well, that is basically a blank canvas towards whatever we're about to experience mm -hmm. so whether you walk to this coffee shop, your energy, right? If you bring good energy, and you're talking about the ping pong effect, like that, that barrier was not anything until you walked into it, yeah. right? And so when you bring in that extra, that, ener that good energy or bad energy, you're now affecting the person to yeah. your left, to your right. And so that's, that was actually a theory created by some like 10 pound brain <laughs> um, talking about, you know, what we bring, because you're pushing, it's like displacement of air, right? Yeah. Like you're pushing air into, and it's like, okay, well now this air is like, oh, this tastes good. Yeah. Like it smells like grapes in here. Yeah. Right? And it's like, oh, everybody smells grapes. It's the displacement of happiness, displacement of like anger and sadness. And so like, you know, you're angry, you bump into somebody, that person like, you know, it's like, what the hell, you know? and <laughs> Yeah, now they forget their coffee order and get the wrong thing yeah. and it, it's just well, it, butterfly effect. It's I another way to say that is whatever you lean into you create. You know, whatever no, whatever you lean into you make space for. So if I'm lean if I walk into a coffee shop and I'm expecting to have bad um, experiences, guess what? Yeah. I will. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah. if I walk in and go, you know, I'm I'm just going to celebrate life and yeah. be out in this space and being able to you know, enjoy this coffee with other humans in the room and like I'm bringing in that intention and yeah, I do think there's a, a wave that like people can kind of yeah. pick up on. Like we do this at the public shared experience event that I do that like just getting everybody to just be there together and then stuff starts flowing and things get said yeah. that you cannot explain. Like this person didn't know this person, all of a sudden this person just said something to this person that like literally lit them up. Yeah. And all it is is just kind of the acknowledgement that we're all in the space together yeah. and I might have something here that I'm thinking about that if I share with you will change your day yeah you know that yeah. will imp impact something you're doing yeah. or like lighten your load yeah. or whatever you know however you want to say it so yeah I think you you care you know uh, you can't transmit what you don't have there's all kinds of sayings I can say you know about this like but you you experience what you're willing to carry you yeah know, you know and what you're willing to lean into yeah. and see and that goes for forgiveness right and so yeah. like you know uh i know there's steps to the conversation but but um, you're gonna ignore that no nah. <laughs>
<laughs> He's like, I know that's not on your question card, but I'm going to talk about forgiveness. It's fine. <laughs> that's why I like well, having here. This is what this show is supposed <laughs> to be about, actually. This is real conversation. This is like, yeah. you know, we, we've committed to be in the now today together for an hour, yeah. you know. I didn't commit to Buzz, but you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Do I look frumpy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for like literally three minutes before we started the show, <laughs> this guy over here is like, "Do I look frumpy? Do I look frumpy?" Like, nothing about you and you. Like, <laughs> anyhow. No, <but> like <laughs> forgiveness. If, um, going back to like getting the wrong coffee, I, we must like be really thinking about coffee because coffee has been right. a five-minute takeover of this conversation, but. Um, I mean, like, if you get the wrong brew, which I would never know. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I would never know. If I go and I'm like, can I get a blonde latte? And they give me, like, a dark roast, I would never know the difference. <laughs> but um, l let's take fast food. You yeah. go and get, like, a hamburger and they, or, and, and they forget your fries. Like, you can either go back, get the fries, and be like, oh, like, hey, it was a, yeah, you forgot my fries. And you go, like, what you see on these YouTube videos where, like, People are th throwing fits and climbing through like windows, like you forgot my fucking chicken nuggets. And you're like, <laughs> what is that person on? Well, and they're not on anything. They're just angry people. Yeah. Calm down. Like <laughs> it was a it was a mistake. We've all we've all made. A, who has not made a mistake? And and like, back to the I raise my agreements. hand because I've never made a yeah, mistake. Yeah. Oh, I've never made a mistake. <laughs> Dude knows that. Uh, uh, it goes back to the vibe of Don't take things too personal. Like, yeah. You don't know. There's so much going on. There's yeah. so much context in the world. Yeah. Like, there's so much, you know, like, I know you were a big bear with your family this weekend. You probably had a lot of cool experiences. Yeah. We could have talked about that for an hour. Yeah. But, you know, there's always more to the situation yeah. than you know. And yeah. if you allow everything to be a personal, like, thing on you, yeah. you're walking around with a lot of pain and anger. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's too much. Like, I would I would just say release it because it's just too much. No person should carry that. Yeah. Like it's it's good on you. You're not doing anything um, for yourself, yeah. for your health, for yeah. your people, the pe people that you care about by carrying shit like yeah. that. Plus, like, it makes room it makes room for growth and absolutely. and and happiness, right? And yeah. not to be like foo foo. Oh, it makes room for happiness, but like you're if be you're foo -foo. Holding, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> If you're if you're holding on to just anger, you can't receive you can't receive anything. You're just totally. so caught up in like this feeling, this moment, and like you know, uh, I'm not gonna quote Buddha because I can't quote Buddha, but like the whole mindset of like if you're just in that whole area, then you can't see the sunset, yeah. right? Because you're caught up in this BS about oh my mother said X Y Z and da da da, and like you can't see that. You know, there's ducks crossing, and not again being foof, but you can't see the beauty of nature. And you can't, you can't see like you know the. I mean, I, I was walking around downtown today. Yeah. I mean, Stephanie's in downtown, right? And I was like, man, I love fucking downtown, right? There's a big mural on on your building. Mm -hmm. I've never seen. The mother and child. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if I was just caught up in my thoughts, that wouldn't have even caught my eye. Yeah. So. Um, and we get caught up in thoughts when we're dealing with negative behavior. Totally. So, what I just imagine what's coming into my mind when you're saying this. So it's like imagine the stuff that you are that you won't forgive, or if you won't forgive a person, imagine as being like the heaviest of heaviest backpack that, mm -hmm. that that's on you, and every day, oh, oh I got to put this thing on. It's mm -hmm. so heavy. I got to carry it around. Oh, it's like it's skewing every experience that you have because it's so heavy. But it takes one moment to take it off. Mm -hmm. So this is why we forget. We don't forget because maybe the person deserved it or whatever. We forget because we deserve it. Mm -hmm. You do not need to carry that stuff mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. It is serving no one. Yeah. No one. Yeah. And it's so easy to just go, you know what? I forgive you. Yeah. Like, I, I'm going to get over it. Yeah. Sorry it, that you didn't put my fries in. It does in. sound easy. You know, sometimes, like uh, my old job, mm -hmm. um, that elicits some, like, real emotions that you know, I have to work to like let go. But um, one thing I, I taught to my wife, she hates me saying this, is like, how long do you want to be upset about it? You know, like how long do you want to hold on to it? And mm -hmm. so when I do get into those moments, I remind myself like, okay, I've been in this long enough. I've been upset long enough. Like it's time to just let it yep. go and, and move on. And so that is, you know, it sure it is, it sounds, when people talk about it, like we're talking about it, oh, it's so easy. 
it's easy because it's a choice. Yes. That's why it's easy. And it's easy to, you put your own limitation on when you're going to do it. Yeah. You know, nobody else can say, well, yeah, it's easy, just do it today. It's yeah. like, no, just when you, do, do, when you actually it. decide to do yeah. it, it's pretty easy. But yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. to, you know, go through, well, you know, maybe there's a process. Maybe yeah. you've got to get angry, get sad, yeah. and, and, and then release it. You know, whatever it is, everybody's a little bit different. Yeah. But it is easy yeah. to make a choice. Yeah, and then when you do it so often, right, when you, because it, it's yeah. practice. Yeah. It's a, it's a practice, that, that's a skill. It's a skill to move forward. And so, like, if you're living in anger for so long and it's just this, that's what defines you and people know you as an angry person, mm -hmm. you just practice to let stuff go and then yeah. sooner or later it'll be easier and then it then you can say oh it's easy right because at one point it wasn't and then like you give it a try today i won't be mad at the meter man i was 10 minutes late you know i'm not gonna be mad at the ticket oh i got a ticket that's on me yeah like take take blame right totally. for some of the responsibility stuff. And, yeah and one of those five what yeah. was it one of a uh, the five um, honor your word don't take it personal yeah don't take it personal and take responsibility right um, don't take things don't make assumptions always do your best listen but be skeptical uh. no you just added a seventh one in there yeah. i added a sixth one today uh, he should send me some maybe, money maybe we should collaborate we should write a book <laughs> hey, hey don miguel <laughs> we're gonna reach out to you all right um well how so moving on um how how do you spot a difficult person so like i think we both mm. sort of have this uh, if I know this is going to be a difficult situation, probably not going to give a lot of energy yeah, towards yeah. it or a dif difficult person or person that tends to be difficult. Like, what are some of your, ah, this is going to be difficult? Yeah. Um, if you're in a place of business and um, there's no eye contact, mm -hmm. I feel that um, you're already kind of starting off incorrectly, mm -hmm. right? Or no greeting. And, and I'm not talking about like, you're walking into a no restaurant. I'm saying like in general. No intention to connect. Yeah. It's kind of what it feels like when yeah. there's no eye contact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't be bothered. Yeah. You're <laughs> My screen yeah, time you <laughs> is more important than you, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I've been here and you're on the phone for, you know, five to seven minutes. Yeah. Like I'm right here. I want to do business with you. Yeah. Uh, that's one way. Um, I'd say people, and you are not this. He is so the opposite of this. Um, people that don't show up on time or don't uh, acknowledge that they're going to be late. It's like, my time matters too. Like, yeah. don't set an appointment with me and then miss it and miss it. Yeah. And, like, that is uh, yeah. difficult. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm really holding difficult. space and time for you. Yeah. Why, wa why was my time not of some value? Yeah. You know? Here's one that I do yeah. that uh, I often watch. I have to check myself. And it's... Um, start to interrupt before the person's finished talking. Mm -hmm. And that, that can be difficult because like me, I know if, you, if anybody interrupts me, it's hard for me to get back on track with my thought. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that thought was important for business purposes or you know, whatever's happening that yeah. day. So when I start to do that to other people, I'll start to say, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to do that. Um, because it is difficult it, that, and that's a difficult person. It's like, oh, my alpha is taking over and I'm not letting, I'm not giving you the space to be a leader or X, Y, Z or whatever's going mm -hmm. on at that moment. Um, so that is, that's a sign, mm -hmm. you know, when somebody's already like being a bull <laughs> in the China shop. There, there's also a feeling. So if you're, we're talking about more um, spotting a person when you're, you're in a situation with them, maybe in a work situation or you're meeting for the first time. Um, I also t talk about being vampired. Like I know that I'm gonna, I'm with a difficult person when I literally can feel, <laughs> literally, did I just sound like a valley? Like, I literally like, oh my God. I literally feel, <laughs> it sounded like that, didn't it? Um, I literally feel the energy just being drained. Out, out of my body yeah, like I can't to the ground. I don't even ha I don't want to respond because I don't want to stay in the conversation because there's just so much like someone either going on a rant about how just a negative rant yeah um, I, I was at a dinner party this weekend and, like this woman kept talking about like another person being so negative and everything she talked about was negative I'm like oh sister honey dear yeah. uh, you yeah. might need to look in the mirror yeah. <laughs> you know like this is yeah. this is tough you know yeah. but yeah so I think 
spotting that, like knowing yourself enough, like I don't really feel good with this person yeah. right now. Like you're probably never going to, yeah. um, and you will only if you get an opportunity to go, hey, can I tell you something about me? Yeah. And the, and the, hey, can I tell you something about me is not saying to this new person, hey, when you did that, I like, that was so rude. You were so rude. Why are you so rude to me? Yeah. It's more like, hey, um, there's this thing like, um, uh, you know, for instance, like uh, when someone's late, I feel like they're disrespecting me and I, 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 it's really hard for me to overcome, but it goes back to like, uh, you know, when I was a kid and I was going to dance class and my mom would pick me up late all the time and the, the teacher would be so upset and all the kids would make fun of me and like that feeling has stayed with me in my entire life. So when someone's late, oh, just like it brings it up. So I know you didn't intend to do it, you know, but I just want you to know that. Like yeah. usually if someone has an ounce of compassion or humanity yeah, yeah, and they'll go, oh my God, I'm yeah, so sorry, I'm so I'll try sorry, better. Yeah. I'll, I'll um, you know, I'll send a note the next time or, yeah. you know, whatever. But in both cases, that's better communication and a better opportunity for this, for people to not experience difficult behavior yeah. and to feel good because now the person's not having to defend their action yeah. that was not personal to the other person and the person let them know it was it's not yeah. personal, this feeling towards you. Yeah. You know? you know, people aren't sitting in their cars like, I'm gonna get this motherfucker. <laughs> like they're not they're not plotting to destroy your like all being. Any they're person like, wearing a white t shirt with blonde <laughs> hair today, I'm going to roll them over. Yeah, like, like, I am going to ruin their day. day. Yeah. Like I mean there are I'd say less than one percent of the population of the world doing that right now. Yeah. But like, you know again, it don't take it personally. Like it's it's not out, people are going through their own BS yeah. throughout the day. But I think, again, back to what I was saying, I think people have lived in, in a world where that is acceptable to be upset yeah. and angry. And like, it's, it's really, you know, um, I'm reading a book right now, Flourish, and it's about creating um, better well-being yeah. in, in, in the world. Um, and so much so that uh, elementary schools and middle schools are adopting um, the Penn State prog uh, Resiliency Program and teaching their kids how to flourish instead of, you know, flourish is a, a state of happiness. Um, and if you can flourish, you can forgive and you can forget yeah. and you don't have to live with that anger. And, and you don't go into situations um, being that person, yeah. right? Well, it's, and seventy percent of that is just being in the right relationships with people. You yeah. know, not l allowing a relationship that's toxic, you know, to to exist in the same way that it it has been. Like, you know, there's people, family. Like, you never want to like turn your family away. But if if you're experiencing nothing but like pain, you know, you might have to change yeah. how you relate with this person or the frequency that you relate. You know, just, just for your own, you know, sake of uh, well-being yeah. and to be able to like you know, give something back when those two people come back together. It's yeah, like, look, yeah. I, I, I'm I, taking care of myself so I can take better care of this, you yeah. know, of this relationship. Um, what, uh, so what kind of success, <laughs> so for those of you listening or watching that, uh, you know, you're thinking of a difficult person that's in your life, you're like, Ugh, you know, just as soon as I say difficult person, this person pops in your head and you're I've like, I one. really want some advice. Like, how do I deal with this person? Uh, Robert, what would you say to like, how do you change a difficult person? What, have you had any success in changing a difficult person? <laughs> the, the easiest way to answer this is I've had success changing a difficult person's attitude towards me, right? Mm -hmm. But they will go and continue to be difficult people to other people mm -hmm. unless it's been somebody who's paid me to go through like right. hypnotherapy and they're like, I need to change who I am. Um, which is, you said, you know, you're talking about dropping packs earlier and that's something that, you know, that's a, an exercise we do in hypnosis, you know, while you're in your whole subconscious state, you're thinking about like, you know, what's weighing you down and then slowly and surely you're letting those bricks out mm -hmm. and then now you're at the top of the mountain and you know, there's no, there's no more weight. Long story short, um, I, I'm at a point in my life where like I'll call people out. Um, I'm like, hey man, like do you think that, 
Yeah. You think that is the best way to approach that whole situation? You know, they could be going through something right now. Mm -hmm. Like you've never had a bad day. Like, yeah. um, and I'm a big dude. I'm six, six and you know, 270 and you know, people tend to listen to me when I speak. Uh, Are you saying because I'm a little white girl, nobody listens to me, Because you're a little white girl, nobody cares. Because <laughs> you, like, from I'm the valley. I'm never doing this show again. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, from the valley. Yeah. Like, literally. Oh. <laughs> Deed says, uh, not true. No. He just but, jumped you know, in my lap. It's a, it's a, it's a, alpha, like, w if you can come off and you say, and respectfully, right? Yeah. Not like, hey, man, you're a shithead. Like, you should just change your attitude. Then you're just. You're, you're, just you're just giving more giving bad energy. More, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that person's going to be like, oh, somebody just called me a shithead. I'm gonna... Yeah, that, that's helpful. Yeah. But, like, if you, the whole process, I think, is to be compassionate, um, to be, you know, uh, accepting and respectful and um, to be your authentic self, right? And that means that, like, you work on yourself. And so, like, people, it, the whole lead by example, right? Like, if, People will see, the people that surround you will see that you're doing the same things yeah. that you're saying that you should be doing. And it's, it's always a growing process. You're, look, you and I are going to get upset at, at somebody and we're going to be difficult people at some point. And then it's the matter of acknowledging that moment and saying like, okay, I'm, I'm being this, this way that I don't want to be right now, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and doing what it takes to change that process. So it's like, hey, like even... One thing I do do myself, do do. Uh, do do. I. <laughs> one thing I I do myself is that I um, I will apologize. Like if if it's you know two minutes or twenty minutes or two hours, I will say, hey man, like I'm sorry for how I reacted, and that like goes a long yeah. way. It goes a long way. People have, I can't tell you like how many um, relationships I've strengthened because like I've acknowledged that even if it wasn't yeah. completely my fault I'll say hey man I'm sorry that that happened um, like maybe we could figure out a, a better way to work yeah would there's only two so much for me came up yeah he's he's such a little warm he's like a little heat ball too <laughs> my life is my lap is so warm right now is what I'm trying to say um, but I'm happy you're here but uh, and There's now so much I, that and came now up. Just, you were saying this. So much came up and yeah. so much that sorry. I just lost because of my I'm dog. sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> um, oh, God. No, I was saying, well, apologize. Apologizing. Yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So there's only two things that really bind us in, um, in relationships. It's communication and experience. Mm. And uh, I, I think too many times people are afraid to have a bad experience or what is perceived as an unfavorable one uh, because they just don't want to go through it. But m in my experience too, when you go through something that's difficult with somebody and you just like, you own your own role in it, you, you know, apologize if you need to, but mm -hmm. you just get real, the, the, the strength of that friendship or relationship just um, yeah. magnifies it. Feel like you've now just went through th something with this person and there's more value in the relationship yeah. for now having a difficult moment behind yeah. you. Like I know and now you and you only, and you know what to expect. I don't think you know a person really truly until you've seen them in an unfavorable situation or gone through it yeah. together and then how you handle it yeah. is, you know, yeah. how you move forward. But you know, back to the question, it's like are we, you know, you help people when they come to you saying I'm working on something and yes can have success in that because they've set the intention of, like hey I know I'm not showing up in the world mm -hmm. the way I want to and I'm coming to you for help so there's probably some success rates there yeah. but by no means will you ever change a person that you perceive as being difficult um, by trying if, le if they don't have the intention to see that they want to yeah. better themselves but what we can do is change how we perceive it. And I think that's, yeah. generally speaking, what we've been talking about this whole time is like to not take things personal, to you know, find a moment where you can check in and go, hey, what did you mean by that? Like, this is how I read it. This is how it came across for me. This is how it made me feel. But like, what was going on with yeah. you? Like, yeah. I care enough to ask. Yeah. You know, that's how we get yeah. better at dealing with difficult behavior, difficult people, and difficult situations. Yeah, and you know, also, um, respectfully pointing things out mm -hmm. right like 
Um, and compassionately, somebody, you yeah, said that earlier. Yeah, if yeah. you're if you're at a restaurant and somebody's being shitty to a waiter, you say, hey, like, do you think, you know, simply, like, do you think that was necessary? Yeah. You know, That's oh, yeah, well, they, they didn't bring me my water. Oh, well, like, you know, okay. I, I know. And you don't have to fight with them. I, I don't suspect too many people that, that are difficult are watching right now <laughs> or even or they may not know that they're difficult but th this thing about the waiter stuff or like treating somebody in service like comes up a lot like um, if you're dating right now just a little tip if you're male or female you know if you're dating right now and uh, you're the kind of person that would be rude to someone in service don't expect the person that you're on the date with to ever call you back again because yeah. that's a thing that everybody pays attention to like I, I would never, yeah. never want to hang out with someone again. Yeah. Unless if they're also shitty to waiters, because you know, birds of a feather. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah if you're two, yeah. <laughs> two, if, two pieces of pie. If you both, if you're dating right now, I hope, and you're a person that's shitty to a waiter, I hope you find your shitty match that's shitty to a waiter. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> we cannot end the show. That, we cannot end the show that way. <laughs> I hope you find your shitty match. Yeah, I hope you find your <laughs> shitty match. No. But no, I'm just saying, that's a thing that like, hey, everybody brings it yeah. up, it's not cool, don't do it. I mean, yeah. and it just takes the acknowledgement of like, hey, you are in the world with other people. Yeah. Um, the, just be cool, yeah. be nice, yeah. be nice. Yeah. Uh, um, what else can we say about this before we, we're almost running out of time. I know, that went fast. I know. Um, well, so did anybody guess the noise um, that I might have experienced? Or what, or what are people saying? In, uh, in Facebook right now. We'll get a report in a second. Uh, be, be checking. There's a, um, have you seen Dumb and Dumber? I have. Long time ago? Yeah, when long it, time. Like, came out in the early 90s? Uh-huh. Well, my best friend, favorite movie in this world, right? And uh, when you brought that up, it's like, he, uh, Jim Carrey says, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Do, Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> She brought that up earlier, too. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. For like a minute. For like a minute. I, I'm telling you that that's not the most annoying. annoying uh, can I guess? Can you guess? Okay. Can you give me a, a so, realm? Yes. I'll guess. So, you know, we're in a uh, space where there's other businesses mm -hmm. uh, on the floor, on the floor above me, below me, uh -huh. next to me. And um, there's a pro professional ph photography studio next mm -hmm. store to me. Imagine what would make the most noise on a photo shoot. <laughs> on a photo shoot? I, I think you uh, have. I think at one point you had. T you have. You have two of them at home. Uh, dogs. <laughs> no. Uh, one. Do you have people? one or two? <laughs> 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 um, at one point. Was there a car well, up here? <laughs> I'm trying to do a mad libs of the. Um, <clears throat> well, speaking of noise. Yeah. Um, babies. Could you imagine being in your office and trying to work and hearing babies cry like all day long? Well, I I would often fly to Japan uh -huh. and that's like a, you know, spending 18 to 20 hours on an airplane. Yeah. And you hear, you know, babies crying for that long. Okay. So if you think that's the most annoying noise, imagine parents or people trying to art direct the babies to distract them from crying, <laughs> making high pitched noises, similar to Jim Carrey's and, noise. Yeah. <laughs> On top of that, <laughs> with loud music playing and a couple doors slamming. You're like, yeah. How's that yeah, for being in the world with other people? Yeah, especially when we're trying to get work done. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I get that. All right, that was my day yesterday. Anyhow, um, and I'm sure, uh, you know. So angry. Uh, am I? Do I say, <laughs> are you going to call me an angry white woman now? <laughs> Such an angry blonde lady. Um, you know, my point for bringing this up, like, I'm sure these people didn't even know that they were like doing not. this. Yeah, yeah. And, but had they kind of thought about, oh yeah, we're bringing a lot of extra elements, yeah. it would have been nice yeah, yeah. to get a heads up on that yeah. so I could make other plans. Yeah. You know, and that's, th that's the kind of thing that, yeah, I could, s I could start spreading rumors right now. Oh my gosh, these people are so difficult. They're awful. They're terrible. Difficult people. They're on my difficult people yeah. list. They don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that they don't know. Um, and the way that I can step up to kind of make that situation differently is just like in passing say, hey, next time, just give me a heads up. Yeah. That's all I need to know. I could do conference calls yeah. somewhere else or whatever. Yeah. It's um, like throwing a party at the house, right? You yeah. throw a party yeah, at you the tell house, your you let your neighbors. You let your neighbors Or you know. invite your neighbors yeah. and then, you know, if they don't want to come, totally. you know, at least they had the invite. Totally. So. All right. Um, 
Invite we'll your neighbors. Invite your neighbors. So we're running out of time. We're not going to do the questions okay. today because we've gotten goofy and went off track anyways. But I do want to hear why Buzz Light's here yeah. this year. And I think I can segue to help you talk okay. about him. So you haven't been here in a while. You know about the heart swell. Yeah. Um, talking about somebody, you know, giving a shout out to somebody that like deserves it, you know. And the reason that I do this on the show is to show people it's okay to express deep emotions. Like we need this. This whole talk was about that. Like we just need to talk when things come up and, yeah. and be able to say things with compassion and consideration. And so I'm hoping by seeing some deep shared emotions here on the show that people get encouraged and they want to do that as well. So you're going to give your heart swell and you're going to tell me why Buzz Lightyear is here. I am. Okay. It's good to freak him out. So my heart swell today is uh, one, I'm, again, I said I was about to graduate, I'm about to graduate in May, and so I want to thank my wife for really kind of stepping up and, you know, doing the thing and, you know, uh, taking care of business while I am away, again, like I'm away right now, right, from the house. But um, on the side note, my little man, Jake, gives me a toy when I go to work, and I always take a picture of it you know, at Starbucks or wherever I'm at. And so since I'm on TV today, <laughs> your toy is on TV, buddy. And I want to thank you for being the man of the house when I'm gone and um, understanding that Dada has to work and um, that this is all temporary and I'm doing it so that hopefully one day I can permanently be on a schedule where I'm able to come and uh, go to soccer and baseball and um, that I'm, you know, I, I try to be there for you at all times. Oh, I didn't even know this had a little thing. Anyway, <laughs> <coughs> but um, yeah, my heart swells to my son today. Awesome. Um, you know, I love him with all my heart and I try to uh, acknowledge that he needs me and um, give him the time when I am home, quality time, right? Uh, instead of doing the, okay, I'm here, let's play something real quick and, and bounce, you know, I, I try to make room for, I try to make room, it, it's hard for me, it's, mm -hmm. believe me, like, you know, like, when you're, when you're in it, you're in it, and it's hard to stop being in it and, like, take those moments, and hopefully, uh, I hope you guys see that what I do give is me stopping the world, which my world spins so fast. Um, and, and trying to be present. So that is my thing. And I love you, buddy. I love you, Arlene. And here's Buzz. Here's. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that is. Uh, is that your son's name? I can't see. <laughs> yeah. He's happy to see Buzz. Is that Jake? Yeah, is your son's Jake's name? Hi, son. Jake. Hi, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That was that's gonna be that has to be in the top ten um, but heart swells we've had uh, on the show. I love it. He's gonna freak out. <laughs> but Jake, I'm not gonna let my dog get Buzz. Yeah. Because he's a little yeah. He's he's not he's a little unsure of Buzz. Buzz will come home, buddy. Bu Buzz will come home. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Something that I'm, I I don't know if we've done this together, but I'm trying to issue a social challenge of the week every time um, that's inspired by our talk today. Yeah. So. Let's see, you have, let's see what we can do with this. Um, so last week, you know, we had Aaron James on, uh, the author of Assholes, A Theory, and our social challenge was, you know, check your inner asshole, like, yeah. you know, kind of, <laughs> sounds terrible, I hope Jake stopped watching. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, like, not literally. <laughs> not literally. <laughs> but check, check your bad behavior, and I'm so sorry for cussing. Um, check your bad behavior and say, you know, is this not coming from my yeah. higher self? This is coming from a... a uh, you know, not such a great place and trying to make an adjustment. That yeah. was our social challenge. So in concerns of, uh, so we've kind of already, you know, ins hopefully inspired people that may be doing some bad stuff in the world to kind of check that. Um, I'm kind of leaning into just saying, like, what more could you do this week to acknowledge that you're in the world with other people? Yeah. You're in the now. Like, how much more awareness yeah. can you have this week you know, to see like every person and even like challenge yourself to even like compliment every yeah. person that you say or smile at every person. I've already, yeah, I've yeah. Got one. And it's um, ask how their day is doing, right? Yeah. Uh, literally, like uh, go into see Starbucks Steve and say, 
hey, you know, make your order, and then like, you know, as they're ringing you up, say, hey, how's your day going? Right, legitimately, yeah. like when I'm standing in line checking IDs all day, somebody's like, how's your day going? And I was like, oh, it's going good, thank you for asking. And then if somebody asks you, say, thank you for asking. Like, acknowledging that whole moment. Yeah. So. And I, I'll add to that, so Starbucks Steve, <coughs> on also, I, I hope, we're gonna get reached out by some Starbucks uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve. I hope so. Um, and if he does, we'll, we'll have him on. Um, but when you see somebody's name, like just acknowledging yeah, 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 somebody's yeah, yeah. name tag and then saying it to them, yeah. we are humans. There's nothing we like more than the sound of our own name. Yeah. It feels like acknowledgement. So being able to like, every time you see somebody's name tag, just go, thanks, Tammy. Yeah. You know, thanks, Bob. It's you funny because they're like, how would you know my name? It's like, ah, uh, you're wearing yeah, it. I, I love doing <laughs> that. I, my wife, she's watching apparently. So yeah. like, and Jake. Uh, so she Sorry, knows Arlene that. Sorry, Arlene, for swearing. I feel like such a bad no, like aunt. For believe me, it's yeah. a it's a Marine Corps household. Yeah. So okay. like, uh, if anybody should be sorry, it's me. Okay. But um. I'll I'll send your dad home, Jake, with quarters. <laughs> if you have a quarter jar, I'll give him some. This piggy bank, he loves his piggy bank. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, I do. I'll I'll say you know thanks, Brian. Yeah. You know like, uh, how are you doing today, Sally? You know yeah. whatever it is. Um. That's a good one, you know, it's there, right? Yeah, uh, and one more, I'm just gonna add to this and then we gotta go. When you call in, every time you call in a customer service, you're probably already upset and you're about ready to be the difficult person that they're gonna yeah. talk about for the rest of the day. Um, if you say the person's name or when they say, you know, hello, uh, thank you, you know, what are you calling for? Um, ask them their name and use their name. It helps to diffuse yeah. even your energy about what you're gonna start yeah. to say and them, and it will give them something to lean into to actually want to help you. So yeah. just a little tip. Yeah, I have so many. I have so many, well, yeah. that's gonna be a different show. Yeah. We know, you know how I love having you here. Yeah. And you'll bring another toy and I will have sure quarters next time if I cost it, <laughs> for sure. So that does bring us to the end of the show. I'm so glad that you're here. You can learn more about Robert at Coach, uh, Ro Coach Graves. CoachGraves.com. Or Year of the the bet. Bet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll share all of those links so you can get a hold of him. Remember to take the social challenge. And as always, just try to relate with more curiosity in the world with everybody, everybody that you encounter. So that's what I'm going to leave you at. Relate with more curiosity. We'll see you next week. Bye. Toodaloo.